Right now at noon, the voters have spoken. We'll have the details and results of key races in Kansas and Missouri's primary elections. And we've got a pretty decent day out there. We'll be seasonably hot as we head into the afternoon and evening. We'll have a look at that forecast. Maybe some cooler temperatures and rain chances coming up. Plus, a young girl starts the long road to recovery after surviving a dog attack in southern Missouri. The four states most watched news starts now. This is KOM News at noon. I'm Elise Snowy. The voters have spoken. We're going to take a look at the numbers from yesterday's biggest ballot items in Kansas and Missouri. Missouri Constitutional Amendment number one would provide a property tax break for child care outside of the home. That amendment has failed. Missouri also has a gubernatorial race and nine Republicans were seeking their party's nominations, including current Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft and current Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe. Mike Kehoe wins the nomination. Five Democrats sought the nomination for Missouri Governor. Crystal Quaid was the winner in that race. Five Republicans competed for their party's nomination. The winner, a project by Associated Press, is the former Kansas Attorney Gen General Derek Schmidt in the U.S. House District 2. And two Democrats were competing. Nancy Boyda held this seat in 2007 and 2008. Boyda was against architect and developer Matt Kleinman, the former KU basketball player. Boyda wins the Democratic nomination. We will have a full list of election results on our website, koamnewsnow.com slash elections. You can stay on top of all local election coverage simply by scanning this QR code. It will take you right to the elections page on our website. While there, sign up for our election coverage newsletter to make sure you get the latest election news sent straight to your email. Now let's check in with Chris Warner for a look at the forecast. Yeah, we've got a pretty decent day out there so far. Pretty cool start, well below normal. And as we're heading into the afternoon, it's a slow warming trend for us. Live look, Modoc camera 20th and range line. We got ample sunshine out there. Just seeing a couple of clouds here and there. You cannot see them from this particular angle of our camera on top of the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. But believe me, I've seen a couple out there on our camera itself. And range line. Here's the KDOT camera just south of Pittsburgh at 69 and Kansas Crossing looking good as well. Started yesterday right about average, but made it uh, a little bit above average. Certainly uncomfortable, but much better today. 78 in Joplin, 76 in Pittsburgh right now. Temperatures as we mentioned this morning, right on track, upper 70s, low 80s, still not quite to our high yet, and we'll only get a little bit warmer than this across the region as we head for highs into the low 90s. Clear skies through the evening. We'll start to see a few clouds overnight tonight, but down to about 73 by midnight. And we do have some rain chances starting tomorrow, and after that, temperatures are going to get a little bit cooler. Not cold, but cooler. We'll break down the details in the full forecast here in just a few more minutes. Elise? All right, thanks, Chris. Well, the president of Via Christi Hospital in Pittsburgh announces his retirement. Drew Talbot will step down after 30 years of service to the hospital. Talbot joined Via Christi back in 1996 and has served as president of the Pittsburgh Hospital for the past four years. Talbot's final day as president comes one day before Via Christi Hospital in Pittsburgh transitions to the sponsorship of Mercy Health System on September 1st. Well, community members in the Osho turned down for some food and health advice. Access Family Care invited the public out to celebrate National Health Week. Hot dogs, chips and popcorn were provided while Access Family Care offered information on how to stay healthy and avoid chronic diseases. We celebrate the benefits of providing medical, dental and behavioral health care, primarily to people that are underserved, primarily low income, but we will see anybody. Access to Family Health Care serves multiple locations in southwest Missouri, including Joplin, Lamar, and Neosho. Well, Kansas prosecutors say a former police chief who led a raid on a small newspaper will be charged for actions he took after the raid. Gideon Cody is expected to be charged with felony interfering with the judicial process. He could get up to nearly two years in prison if convicted. In 2023, police executed search warrants at the Marion County Record, the home of its publisher and the home of a city councilwoman. The sheriff's office suspected a reporter illegally obtained driving records on a local restaurant owner. The prosecutors didn't elaborate on the nature of the charge against the former police chief, but it was related to Cody's 
text exchange with the restaurant owner after the raids. The special prosecutors also determined the newspaper did not break any laws in getting the driving records. A Mansville, Missouri girl has a long road to recovery ahead of her after a dog attack left her family wondering if she would even survive. It happened last week in Wright County. Adam Woodbray has her story. Pearl's a normal, precocious little six-year-old girl. She's just out in front after breakfast playing around like little girls do. A little six-year-old Mansfield girl facing a long uphill battle. The Hartley family was eating breakfast back on July 29th. Pearl had finished hers and went out to the yard to play. And they heard the screams. The family was dog-sitting three of their friend's pets, which turned on Pearl when she went into the yard. It was just pretty difficult to get them off. They finally did. But the damage that they had done was horrific. Stephen Randolph is a close family friend, one who's known Pearl all her life. He said he found out what happened as Pearl was on her way to Mercy Hospital in Springfield for emergency surgery. So he went to the hospital himself to meet the rest of the family. The Mercy sur one of the Mercy surgeons came out and said, <clears throat> we've done all we can, but we don't have pediatric specialists here like she needs. Pearl was flown to Mercy Children's Hospital in Kansas City, where she's had blood transfusions and four more surgeries. The Wright County Sheriff's Office, who was unavailable for comment today, told KY3 immediately after the attack they responded to the home on Highway 5 in Mansfield. The Sheriff's Office also said they were still investigating and looking at whether there would be any criminal charges. In the meantime, Pearl and her family are still in Kansas City as she faces one of the biggest battles of her life, needing more surgery, blood, plasma, and mounting medical bills. I can't imagine what the cost of all this is going to be. This girl is facing many surgeries ahead of her. And as Pearl goes through her fight, Randolph says a prayer would go a long way. Coming up, Kamala Harris and her newly selected running mate hit the campaign trail. And later, we're making Texas law in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Well, the Democratic ticket is now set. Kamala Harris is officially the Democratic presidential candidate and her new running mate, Governor Tim Walz, are now taking their show on the road with campaign stops in a couple of key Midwestern states. But everywhere they go, they'll find Republican vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance campaigning ahead of them. Natalie Brand has more details from the White House. Vice President Kamala Harris is heading to the battleground states of Wisconsin and Michigan for her first full day of campaigning with new running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. Since the day that I announced my candidacy, I set out to find a partner who can help build this brighter future. The Midwestern governor introduced himself during their first rally Tuesday night in Pennsylvania. I worked across the aisle on veterans issues, on agriculture, and on ways to grow rural economies. I learned the art of compromise without compromising my values. Voters at that rally said they liked what they heard. I think he appeals to people because he has this sense of being like a trusting like coach or father figure in your life. While Democrats in Pennsylvania seemed happy with the pick, former President Donald Trump also welcomed the choice. He's a very, uh, very liberal man. And he's a shocking pick, and I'm, I'm thrilled. I could not be more thrilled. Trump's running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, is carrying that message that the Democratic ticket is too liberal to the same battleground states where Harris and Walls are campaigning today. This is a radical human being who comes from the far left wing of the Democrat Party. And what Kamala Harris is telling all of us by selecting Tim Waltz is that she bends the knee to the far left of the Democrat Party. But Walls was picked in part for his moderate and independent voter appeal. He won six terms to Congress in a rural district that voted for Trump in 2016. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Both campaigns are focusing on the Midwest for good reason. A new CBS News battleground tracker poll out this weekend shows former President Trump with a one point lead in Wisconsin and tied with Vice President Kamala Harris in Michigan. Both are within the poll's margin of error. We'll still to come on KOM News at noon, Mr. Food. Need a big tasting summer side dish? Look no more, because our Texas law is as good as it gets. 
and we've got some rain chances. One more hot day and then some cooler temperatures. Break down the details when we come back. Welcome back to the KOM News at Noon. So temperatures on a nice little slow warm up. We're not escalating as quickly as we have over the last several days. And we've got pretty decent conditions out there. We're going to take a look at the future track. They're heading through the rest of today. Again, we're still aiming for highs, upper 80s, low 90s. So relatively close to average as we head into the afternoon and evening hours. As we go overnight, we'll start to see a few extra clouds here and there. And then by early tomorrow morning, we're expecting the chance for some isolated to wide scattered showers and thunderstorms to roll through the area. The best chances for meaningful organized rainfall will be before noon tomorrow. Uh, the good news is still at this point not anticipating any severe weather out of this, which is good. We don't need that. We just need some rain. The drought tracker again is starting to show some dry areas, so not quite drought status yet, but we do have some dry areas out there. After about noon, that's really going to be about it. We could have an isolated shower or two uh, later in the evening out there. There, uh, behind all of this, but really the bulk of any meaningful rainfall is going to happen before noon on Thursday. Then we go into Friday. Take a look at these wind arrows. Yeah, they're starting to switch on us. We have a low pressure system off to our west, and as it creeps in, it's going to bring in northerly winds, which will help bring in some cooler air, not cold air. Mind you, it's August. Don't get your hopes up on anything too crazy yet, but it will keep us a little cooler and it'll give at least some of our western counties an opportunity for an isolated shower or storm. The majority of us as we go through the day on Friday will remain dry and we will remain again relatively cool with below normal highs and below normal lows. Quick look outside back behind this box. I told you there are clouds out there. You can kind of see them. They're right back there, so just a few of them out there. Otherwise not bad. It's 78 in Joplin only feels like 80. I know it was warm, but it was a lot worse yesterday at this time. North Northeast breeze at about six heading over to Pittsburgh looking pretty good as well. 76 feels like 78 with an east breeze at around eight miles an hour and temperatures across the region also looking pretty good. We got those upper 70s and some low 80s out there and heat index values as we just showed you for Joplin and Pittsburgh, for example. It's the same case just about everywhere. They're only about two degrees higher than the actual air temperature right now. For the rest of the day, again, upper 80s, low 90s. Some of you will be a couple of degrees below normal today. Some of you might be a couple of degrees above normal, but nothing too crazy. Seasonably hot out there with that northeasterly breeze at around five to 10 miles an hour. A few clouds tonight, below normal temperatures again. Remember, our average low is about 69. We're looking to cap out about 68. Uh, most of us, again, mid upper 60s and east breeze at five to 10. Then we'll have that opportunity for some morning showers and thunderstorms. And then again, afternoon, those chances really taper off. Now, tomorrow it's going to be a little bit warmer. A few more low to mid 90s out there. East breeze at 5 to 10. And we talked about the cooler air that's on the way. Let's take a look at that cooler air that's on the way. Once we get through Thursday, take a look at Friday. Mid 80s. Average high is 91. We're talking mid 80s for highs out there and it gets even better as we head into the weekend. Look at these temperatures. We have rain chances. They're not the world's greatest rain chances at this point, but at least they're rain chances and they will continue all the way through next Wednesday and look at those highs this weekend. Low mid 80s out there. We'll get back close to normal next Tuesday and Wednesday. Unfortunately, as our rain chances begin to come to a close, so do the below normal temperatures. By the end of next week, we're still looking to be right back where we were going back into the upper 90s and lower 100s. So if you got something to do this weekend, a great time to do that. And uh, otherwise, enjoy these temperatures. They're not going to last very long, but there'll be a nice break from that unpleasant heat last week. Absolutely. Definitely welcome. Yes. All right. Thanks, Chris. Well, the Ottawa County Fair is underway this week with activities for the whole family. This afternoon, animal shows will take place, including dairy cattle and sheep. Later in the evening, the carnival will open for the first time this week. My brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters always showed cattle, so I just wanted to try it out. I just always loved it. Highlights. Um, the fair runs through Saturday, August 10th. We'll stick around. We're making Texas slaw in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. We'll be right back. Now we're just sharing his recipe for Texas slaw in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. I bet if you ask 10 people how they make their coleslaw, you'd probably get 10 different answers. 
That's because there's so many different dressings and things that can be mixed into it. Today, I thought I'd share a Texas-style coleslaw that's big on taste and crunch. For this one, we start by adding equal amounts of white vinegar and vegetable oil to a bowl, along with a bit of lime juice, sugar, cumin, ground red pepper, and a little salt and pepper. We whisk that together and set it aside. Now after placing a package of coleslaw mix in a large bowl, we add some red and yellow bell pepper that we've chopped, a thinly sliced jalapeno, and a bunch of freshly chopped cilantro. All that's left to do is pour the dressing over the veggies, give it a good mix, and it's ready to serve. And if you've got a bit of time, it's even better if it's chilled. If you're wondering what makes this Texas style, you'll know exactly after one forkful. I mean, it's hard to miss the big Texas flavor mixed in with all those crunchy veggies. To get the recipe for our Texas slaw, all you have to do is visit our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a big and bold way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. You can find this recipe on our website. That's koamnewsnow.com. Now here's a look at the four state market prices. All right, pretty decent day today. Seasonably hot, upper 80s, low 90s, maybe some storms before noon tomorrow. A little warmer, low mid 90s, and then we get that cool down. Temperatures below average as we head into the beginning of next week. So uh, shower and thunderstorm chances between tomorrow and next Wednesday. And then by the end of next week, unfortunately, the break will come to an end as we go back into the upper 90s and lower 100s. So enjoy this weekend. Absolutely. It'll be pretty decent. Sounds like it. Thanks, Chris. And Dowdy, your first tonight. Lots coming up at Five for starters, back to school shopping is here and prices for school essentials, well, they're higher than ever. We're gonna have some tips on saving for students returning to the classroom. Plus, a historic building in Fort Scott is undergoing major preservation and renovation efforts thanks to a local investment. And the city of Galena has been under a boil advisory since the beginning of this month. We're gonna see how the ongoing water issues are affecting businesses and residents. Hope you'll join us for those stories. A lot more, of course. It's all coming up today. KOAM News at 5. All right. Thank you, Dow. And that's the news for now. Thank you for joining us on KOAM News at noon. We'll see you right back here at 5. Until then, have a great rest of your day.